listen carefully to what Jesus and the Bible have to say about the end times. Listen only to Jesus and the Bible. Do not listen to the men promoting themselves and selling their books and movies. If you understood what the Bible had to say, instead of the teaching of men, two great things would happen. First, many billions of souls could be saved and would not worship a false god. The false god is clever. He does not call himself the Antichrist. He just calls himself God. The unclean spirits love prophecy experts looking in the wrong direction. Second, and just as Jesus commands us in Matthew 25, Christians who were safe in the West would help those Christians all around the world that are in the Great Tribulation today. It is easy to overlook much suffering when you're told you will be raptured away before the tribulation comes. But this is not in the Bible. Not only is the Great Tribulation occurring today, it has been occurring for more than 1400 years. Now let's look specifically at what Jesus and the Bible tell us about the end times. The Bible tells us clearly Jesus will return one more time. Hebrews 9 verses 27 and 28. Just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. The second thing the Bible tells us is that the return of Jesus will be seen by everyone. The Bible says nothing about a secret rapture. Jesus tells us his return will be unmistakable. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or, here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. The third thing the Bible tells us is that Jesus will take believers away from the earth. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. The fourth thing Jesus and the Bible tell us is that believers will face tribulation. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. Jesus speaks very clearly in John 16:33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The fifth thing Jesus tells us is when the bridegroom appears, the door will be tightly shut, and there are no second chances. Learn the parable of the ten maidens. Later the others also came, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Once the bridegroom appears, the door will be shut, and there are no second chances. Everyone left behind is lost. Always beware when anyone tries to argue doctrine from what the Bible does not say. It's almost always false. Please establish your doctrine on what the Bible does say. The sixth truth Jesus reveals is that no one has their name in the Lamb's Book of Life when the beast is fully revealed. Listen carefully to the words of the Bible that no one left will have their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life.
the lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Look at the Bible again. All whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life. This is so important, we're told this a second time in Revelation 17, 8. The beast which you saw once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast, because it once was, now is not, and yet will come. The seventh thing Jesus tells us is that in the last days the world will panic about the waves and the roaring of the sea. Many people think we are running out of time today. They are terrified about climate change, the roaring of the seas and the tossing of the waves. Yet Jesus told us this would happen. When speaking of the last days, 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, shortly before his return, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. The eighth teaching from the Bible is that we are in a spiritual war. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 and 12 put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms fact number nine the bible says is the colors of the four revelation horsemen are white red black and pale green in these last days jesus the lamb of god the only one who is worthy has revealed the meaning of the revelation prophecies white red black and pale green jesus reveals the colors of the four horsemen that we can see everywhere in the world today listen to jesus Jesus revealed the meaning of these prophecies at a time of his choosing and no one else's. None of the prophecy experts could figure this out because only the Lamb is worthy to reveal the meaning of Revelation and open the scroll. In the original Greek manuscripts, which all Bible translations are based on, the word is chloros, from which we get chlorophyll, the color of early spring leaves but it was translated as pale until Jesus chose to reveal it. For example, look at the King James. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. I looked, and behold, a pale horse. Likewise, the NIV translation. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Jesus, and only Jesus, reveals what it should literally say based on the original text. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see, and I looked, and behold, a pale green chloros horse. This is the original text. Why did Jesus choose to reveal this in the end times? Because Jesus is the sovereign God. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Fact number 10 is that the Bible warns against false prophecy. They do not understand that the warnings in Zechariah 13 apply to them. Verse 2, On that day I will banish the names of the idols from the land, and they will be remembered no more, declares the Lord Almighty. I will remove both the prophets and the spirit of impurity from the land. And if anyone still prophesies, their father and mother to whom they were born will say to them, You must die because you have told lies in the Lord's name. Then their own parents will stab the one who prophesies. 
On that day, every prophet will be ashamed of their prophetic vision. They will not put on a prophet's garment of hair in order to deceive. Each will say, I am not a prophet. I am a farmer. The land has been my livelihood since my youth. If someone asks, What are these wounds on your body? They will answer, The wounds I was given at the house of my friends. Fact 11 is that the Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 covenant with many is firm and unbroken. We know from the prophet Daniel in Daniel 9.27 that he will confirm the covenant with many for one seven. In this passage, the reference to he is about the prince who is to come, this demonic ruler who was cast down into the abyss but would later re-emerge from the abyss from Sheol. Daniel clearly tells us that it is a firm covenant and that it is a strong covenant. The covenant with many is firm and unbroken. But what is this covenant? Some prophecy experts have guessed it's some kind of peace treaty with Israel that gets broken. But the Bible says it's a firm covenant, so that cannot be true. Jesus says to understand this, we have to look at the prophet Isaiah. Jesus, the Lamb of God, the only one worthy to open the scroll, reveals that the understanding of the Daniel prophecy comes from Isaiah chapter 28. Jesus reveals this prophecy is about the spiritual realm and the demonic forces that oppose the Son of God. Here is what Jesus reveals about the Daniel prophecy. God is speaking to the spiritual realm. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem. Isaiah 28, 14. In verse 15, you can understand the covenant. You boast, we have entered into a covenant with death, with the realm of the dead, Sheol, we have made an agreement. When an overwhelming scourge sweeps by, it cannot touch us. For we have made a lie our refuge, and falsehood our hiding place. Verse 16 tells us what they are so afraid of, why they need this covenant. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. We do not have to guess about who is this cornerstone or how much power does it have. Jesus himself tells us in Matthew 21, Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. This cornerstone is what they fear. The demonic world knows the power of the Son of God. They know Jesus will throw them in the lake of fire. They are willing to give a covenant to the Antichrist, the beast of Revelation, who claims to be able to protect them and fight Jesus Christ on the last day. But this spirit will lose and go into the lake of fire. Fact number 12 from the Bible is that Jesus says believers are spared from the wrath of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 9 and 10 For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Fact 13 is that the Bible tells us the earth and its inhabitants will be completely destroyed. Isaiah 24 verse 1 See, the Lord is going to lay waste the earth and devastate it. He will ruin its face and scatter its inhabitants. The earth will be completely laid waste and totally plundered. The Lord has spoken this word. The earth dries up and withers. The world languishes and withers. The heavens languish with the earth. The earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. 
Therefore a curse consumes the earth, its people must bear their guilt. Therefore earth's inhabitants are burned up, and very few are left. Bible fact 14 is that God will create a new heaven and a new earth. Isaiah 65, 17, See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. Revelation 21, 1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Revelation 21, 5, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Bible truth number 15, the parousia, the rapture and second coming in a simultaneous event. The Greek word parousia is used 24 times in the New Testament to describe both the rapture and the second coming because they are the same simultaneous event and not separated in time. Now let's briefly talk about what is not in the Bible, but it is taught by men despite not being in Scripture. You hear prophecy experts say seven-year tribulation all the time, but there is no Bible verse in either the Old or the New Testament that says seven-year tribulation. This is an invention of man. We hear many prophecy experts talking about a rapture before the tribulation, called a pre-tribulation rapture. But there is no Bible verse that says rapture before the tribulation. That also is an invention of man. The next time your friend tells you about the seven-year tribulation or rapture before the tribulation, ask them for the Bible verse. They will be puzzled because no one has ever asked them that before. But there is no Bible verse that says that. It is commonly taught by prophecy experts that the Daniel 9.27 covenant is broken. But this is not in the Bible anywhere. In fact, the Bible says it is a firm covenant, an irrevocable covenant. Nowhere does the Bible say it is broken. That also is an invention of man. Now compare the words of the true God to the spirit who wants to be God, but is not. This spirit who opposes Jesus Christ has convinced half the world it is God, but it is not. Just listen to this spirit's words. Obey Allah and obey the messenger, Muhammad. And if they turn away from this, then know that Allah does not love those who refuse to obey him and his messenger. You must obey Allah first before he will love you. It is not an unconditional love like the true God. Here is the truth you need to know. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus is the only path to the Father. Jesus is the only source of peace and happiness. Jesus is the only path to eternal life and salvation. Yes, the world knows the time is short. They are terrified about the roaring of the sea and the tossing of the waves. Put your faith in Christ. When the sky lights up and when Jesus returns, it will be too late. Then the door will be shut and those left behind, Jesus will say, I never knew you. Learn the resurrection truths while there is still time. The many truths of Jesus will show you the path to eternal life. There is no other way. More than 500 people saw the risen Jesus. 500 eyewitnesses. Jesus perfectly fulfilled 351 Old Testament prophecies. This is not by chance. It is an absolute mathematical certainty that Jesus is who he said he was the risen Son of God, the only path. The prophet Daniel gives the crucifixion date 
to the very day, 600 years before it happened. Know and understand this, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. After the sixty-two sevens, the anointed one will be put to death and will have nothing. The Bible tells us the decree to rebuild Jerusalem was given on March 5th, 444 BC. 62 plus 7 sevens is 483 years. This is exactly 173,880 days. March 5th, 444 BC to April 3rd, 33 AD is exactly 173,880 days. Jesus was crucified on Friday, April 3rd, 33 AD for your sins and my sins. NASA confirms there was a lunar eclipse over Jerusalem on Friday, April 3rd, 33 AD at 6 p.m. in the afternoon. This confirms another Bible prophecy. But the true God has even more wonderful things for us to know. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday, April 5th, 33 AD, just as he said he would. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. The prophet Isaiah told us this would happen 800 years before Jesus. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. Rejoice! His resurrection means yours as well. Is there another way for eternal life? No. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. John 6, 40.